this is Tara and if there's any weird noises throughout this video it's him <laughs> we all have our opinions on the absurdness of society and throughout history people have found really creative ways to like get them across at a point where maybe sharing exactly how you feel about things or how you feel about family, friends, society in general wasn't really all that easy but if you think about it what is considered to be the right way or the wrong way or normal has consistently changed throughout time. At some point in history, someone might have said something that today is so normal and so easy to digest and process in the time we're living in, but might have been super controversial or anti-conformist at the point where they actually came up with these ideas. It's very helpful to look back and see how much time it's taken for very simple things to integrate into what we consider as normal now. Also, the type of life we end up living or the hurdles we face, it's very subjective to the time that we grew up, grew up in or are born into, the culture we're born into, the country we're born into. So even in the same time period, it could be very different experiences and very different, I guess, idea of something being the right way or the wrong way depending on the culture or the place we grew up in. Our immediate environment and those who surround us do play a really important part in the things that we believe growing up. Uh, most of us, as we grow up, we tend to shed those things away and form our own ideas, but some others tend to turn that as an integral part of their own identity. The society where we live today is a little bit different because whereas in the past people have had really like a lot of struggle to get even a small thing across be heard at all, now almost everyone has the platform through social media to share whatever they want but there is a new problem with that where there's so much being said and so much being kind of thrown out there that it's very hard to get your voice heard at all because it's like almost the same ideas being said by a hundred people and we've become so used to just like hearing these things not even processing and moving on to the next thing i think what makes sayaka murata interesting as an author is the fact that she is talking about a lot of things that are very recurring facts in japanese literature but she talks about them in the most bizarre, absurd way, but also funny, um, even if it's pretty dark topics. And there is a thing where I read a lot of international literature, like say, English literature contemporary, and I do see recurring themes in everything I read. And sometimes almost like a couple of books released around the same period tend to blend in into my memory where I can't really tell you how they're different because they're kind of dealing with the same things very similarly. I would say even with Japanese literature, especially contemporary, I can say the same. A lot of it is um, talking about the current status of women in society, in those societies, but also how there are so many, like they're at the point right now where tradition is still a huge part of everyday living and people do really care about their own culture and their background, but at the same time, it's becoming it's coming to a point where a lot of people feel inhibited by that same culture and the same rules. And I have talked about Sayaka Murata before a couple of months ago. Actually, no, many months ago, almost a year ago, when I read her first book, Convenience Store Woman. And that was about a girl who was very happy working at a convenience store, very satisfied with where she is in life. And she just does her thing up until the point where everybody tells her that she is meant to be Un, non satisfied with her life and she's meant to be um, aiming for more and seeking more and she shouldn't be just happy doing what she is and she should be looking towards marriage and children and basically following the same route that all her other friends and family have followed but in the end she figures out that that's just what other people tell her that she needs to be happy not necessarily what makes her happy then I read um, Earthlings a couple of months ago, which I think is probably one of the best books I read this year because initially it reads like a young adult book because it is about a young girl and I think as the girl grows up the way the story is written or even the language gets more mature and towards the end it's absolutely bizarre like there's some similarities even between these two books that I think even with the cover I see why they're similar because the parts that I guess the main themes, not themes, the bizarre parts are like 
in and around the same subject matter. But yeah, if you want to see this, I'll link that down below. But today I'm talking about her new release, uh, Life Ceremony, which is um, a bunch of short stories. I'm not really into short stories, to be honest. They, I find them a little bit like... Uh, like I've never read a short story book and come out of being like, oh, that was amazing. It's always like mm, one or two is good and the rest I don't really care for. This was the first time. Not only did the stories feel like it was like a cohesive list, like they all stood well next to each other. They read, it felt like there was a rhythm to it. They made sense to put them together. Whereas um, I'm talking about Haruki Murakami's first person singular. I remember reading that and just feeling like, Okay, I feel like these are like plenty of drafts. So I'm just getting my um, thing up. Plenty of drafts that maybe he's written and put aside and at some point he decided that he could merge it together and publish it. And I'm a big Murakami fan and I'm still saying that. I did write a tiny um, review, which I never post these on Goodreads. I think I should because I do them for these book reviews, these videos, but maybe I should just post them. So what I wrote right after um, I finished reading was Words are powerful, they can make you believe or doubt someone's sanity. Life Ceremony is a series of short stories and the words and the worlds that are introduced in these stories are very different from the ones we live in. For one, some words and actions that are very taboo in our world are norm there. Mini spoiler, but in some worlds people eat the flesh of loved ones who have passed away. In some, they buy clothes and decorative items made of dead humans. None of the stories are gory or that deep. Uh, they are just very simple accounts of worlds where people have begun to adapt and normalize things that are in our society we are yet to. And I say yet to because the way she writes the stories is almost like eventually we're going to get there. You can try and be grossed out by the writing and the subject, but eventually that's where society is headed because of how like it's been so far um, looking at previous themes there might have been many reasons for our society to have progressed to the point that it is described in Murata's story but that isn't the point the main emphasis is on the transient nature of normality what is normal and what is acceptable are never facts but rather the product of events that have taken place across history if we would have evolved or progressed in a different way and dealt with things differently, maybe the society that she is describing in this book would have been our society. And I do think like being able to visualize a world where when you talk about like multiverse, like if we chose a different thing and it would have led to a completely different reality, but that also applies to um, what is set, you know, considered to be like the best way to do things or the normal way to do things. This also could have changed with time. And I guess like more than focusing on um, the topics or particular characters or you know anything specific in those stories the overall feeling that I got from the entire book was just like be very careful about what, how you process things that are said to you especially like things that people make you feel like you are meant to do or meant to feel or meant to process in a certain way because the more we take things as norm, the more we will, I guess, struggle to then change and adapt to change. If we think of things as like, this is what feels normal to me right now, this is what I want to do right now, and my opinions and desires and everything might change over time. It's a much better way to live life, simply because you might, like, even with our parents or our grandparents, look at it that way, like, what was normal for them? like. For example, online dating, it's probably not something that even like our grandparents would have ever understood or like even considered, but today it is a norm. It hasn't been introduced to their generation as smoothly as it's been introduced to ours. That's why our perception and I guess openness to it is a lot more than theirs is. Um, it's just subjective. I don't know if that made sense, but that's the whole point. There is one chapter where I talked about, I think it's called a magnificent spread. And there's like three or four people coming together about food. And even in present society, I feel like food is strange because the idea of processed food or things like Huel, um, or even, yeah, Huel is a good example because a lot of people, again, if you look back even 20 years 
30 years into the past um, and tell people that this is what people are consuming today, protein bars. And the makeup of what is considered a balanced diet for someone working in London, living a, living a very high-paced life, is very different from what people are consuming maybe in the countryside in England. But there's still people living in the same country, same time period. Under the right setting, even the weirdest things tend to take precedence if it comes to like when you think about I want to be more comfortable, I want to have a more convenient life. And in this short story, it's like four people coming in and one of them forages and the other one is basically living off of like very like think like space food or army food. And all of them find each other's diet like really bizarre and really disgusting whereas their own ones are quite questionable and in the end they just like try to acclimatize and then there's also like little um jabs at i guess people current in current society like there were these parents who were there with like liver and um things that maybe in some culture like fish head was there and it might be normal right but there, looking at that girl who was like, oh no, I only eat leaves and flowers and I make soups with flowers. And she was like, how can you eat that? So it's basically everyone telling each other how bizarre their life is and their choices are, uh, while not even like thinking about how their own um, way of living or doing things might also be quite questionable at the same time. My favorite story in this has to be the one life ceremony. Uh, it was the longest one but I think it's also that story that made all the other stories made sense. Life is a temporary illusion made up of all our little lies and I'm gonna read a little bit that I've highlighted from page 84, 85. Um, it says it's the way the world is, right? Everyone always says that things like common sense or instinct or morals are carved in stone. But that's not true. Actually, they're always changing. Things keep transforming. I wish they'd stop judging people. It's like their position has been the right one for the last hundred million years or something. If it's always changing, it means it's not certain, right? And even though it's uncertain, everyone believes it like a religion. It's so weird. The world is but a brilliant mirage, a temporary illusion. So almost like every truth we know, or everything that we think is true, is almost like this momentary truth, this momentary illusion that we like to believe, so that we feel like we're part of this like cohesive part of the society, and we're also following the same rules, hence we're normal. Another one from Body Magic, uh, 126. We were still in danger of being easily knocked back by our words or diminished by the values created by adults who rule the world. Each time we had to make our own bodies our own by chanting that magic charm. It was really tiring, but if we didn't protect ourselves like that, our precious world would be destroyed. I hugged Shiho even tighter and said in a bright voice, listen to the cicadas, it'll be summer vacation soon. Ah, this is the one where I thought it was the same main character, the same girl as Earthlings. So if you've read this, uh, it'll be, make a bit more sense to you. But the whole idea is about these young people who are going through life and like terrible things are happening to them. But instead of just processing it as how they were taught to process it, they kind of ascribe their own meanings to their experiences. They were learning to see the world with like a completely fresh pair of eyes. So imagine you go out and people are talking to you. So instead of just thinking, oh, why is this stranger talking to me? You don't think about it at all. You just kind of like, oh, what is this person saying? You focus more on things that are happening in that moment instead of always drawing back from your experiences or always drawing on what you should and should not be thinking about the situation. That's it. That's Life Ceremony. Read it. It was really good. I think both of them, if you do find them because I don't know how easily they're available worldwide, but at least in the UK, I did buy both of them from like high street bookstores. But I think Amazon probably is your best bet if not. And they're quite um, unexpectedly like short, like the writing is huge. I wish they were both normal size because I'm tired of buying these mismatched size books. Um, if anyone from a publishing or like any anyone involved in Sayakum Arts' team is watching this, can we please have normal size books in the future? But apart from that, really, really fun reading it. I recently read uh, Miko Kawakami's new book and I feel like they're both very like the topics that they deal with are so not 
similar but very close but I definitely think that she has a more fun way of approaching those topics that make you um, giggle at times but also you don't just look past the dark stuff it does take a while to process it but it's easier to get through these books than maybe something that's like going really deep into something but yeah that's all I'll see you next time bye